Hey, what's up guys, it's Tech Infusion, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this really awesome lower third in After Effects. Let's jump right in. All right, so for this lower third here, you'll see that this white line comes in and then is replaced by a red line, and then our text slides in from different directions. So to create this, let's go ahead and create a new composition. I'm going to call it lower third and make it 3840 by 2160. Now let's head up to our rectangle tool and select it. Then I'm going to just set my fill settings to white and set my stroke settings to none. Then let's draw a rectangle kind of like this, basically where you want your lower third subtitle to be. All right, perfect. Now let's select our anchor point move tool by selecting it up here in the toolbar or pressing Y on your keyboard. Then let's move the anchor point for this layer to just about the right side of this rectangle. That way when we go ahead and scale up this rectangle, it'll scale from the right side. If you need more help understanding what the anchor point actually does, I made a video on animating arrows and lines that goes into further detail about this. Anyways, let's now press S on our keyboard with our rectangle layer selected. This will open up the scale properties. Ensure the playback head is at the beginning of your timeline. Now just press this chain icon. This will unlink the X and Y scale properties. And then just click on the stopwatch icon here to create a keyframe. Now I'm going to change the X value to zero, and then I'm going to go about 10 to 12 frames forward on my timeline and change the X value to 100%. Then let's just easy ease both of these keyframes by selecting them and pressing F9 on the keyboard. I'll also want to turn on motion blur here as well so that the movement looks a little bit more natural. Now when I play this back, you'll see that the white rectangle grows from the right to the left. Now let's go ahead and duplicate this layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl or Command D on your keyboard. Then let's select the duplicated layer and press Y to bring up the anchor point move tool. Or you, again, you can just grab that in the toolbar. Then let's move the anchor point to the left side of the rectangle. Now I'm going to drop down the properties for the second duplicated shape layer and under the content properties, I'll go to fill and change the fill color from white to something like a dark red. Now let's press U on our keyboard and this will show us all the keyframes that this layer has. And we can see that it automatically brings up the scale property because that is the only set of keyframes we had on the shape layer before it was copied. Let's take both of these keyframes and move them to the right so that this first keyframe of our second duplicated shape layer lines up with the last keyframe of our first shape layer, just like so. Now when I play it back, you'll see that we have this cool little animation where the rectangle animates in and that is filled from the left to right with a different color. Now that we have this animation, let's create our text. Go up to your toolbar and select the text tool. And with this tool, you can choose where you want your text to be. Then let's just type out our subtitle here. Then by using the character window on the right, let's format the text to our desired look. I'm going to make this white and just set which font I want. Then we'll need to adjust sizing to fit inside the subtitle rectangle here. I'll also use the paragraph window and align the text to the left. Cool, now let's go ahead and use the text tool again to create the main title above the subtitle. Today, we're creating a lower third for John Smith. And then again, we're just going to be using the character window to format the text how we like. Here, I'll use the Gotham font, and then I'll want the name to be a little bit bigger than the subtitle was. And that's perfect right about there. Now that we have our text looking good, it's time to animate it in. Let's start with our subtitle. With the subtitle text layer selected, press P on your keyboard to bring up position. Now let's create a keyframe right after our subtitle rectangles finish animating in. Then go forward like five to 10 frames and create another keyframe for position. Now go back to the first keyframe and you can do that by using these little arrows here right next to the diamond keyframe create button. And let's set the position of our X value so that the subtitle goes all the way to the left. And we'll need to keep moving this until the text is completely off this red rectangle, just like so. Now select both position keyframes and easy ease them. Then I'll turn on motion blur for this layer and then right click on the subtitle text layer and click on pre-compose. And I'll name this composition subtitle. What this will do is let us mask out the text without the mask moving with this new position animation. So now with this new subtitle composition selected, go to the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle mask that lines up with the red rectangle we made earlier. And now when I play it back, you'll see that the text will seem to fly in from the left of the rectangle. Now let's animate our main title. This process is almost the exact same. However, for this, we'll be making it come up out of the rectangle instead of flying in from the left. So let's open up the position properties by selecting the layer and pressing P on the keyboard. Then I'll choose on my timeline where I want the animation to start and create a new keyframe. Next, I'll go to where I want it to end and create another keyframe. Then I'm just going to go back to my first keyframe and I'll change the Y value until the main title is not showing above the rectangle at all. Then just make sure both of these keyframes are easy eased and toggle on motion blur. 
Then I'm going to pre-compose this layer and name it main title. And using our rectangle tool, create a mask right above this new animated subtitle rectangle where I want my main title to end up. Make sure that this mask ends up on the top of this red rectangle so that the title appears to be animating in from behind it. Now let's give it a play and see how it looks. I really like this. To animate this lower third out, just reverse all of your keyframes. Now the easiest way to do this would be to copy all of the keyframes at the beginning of the animation and paste them where you want it to start animating out. Just do this to all of the layers. Then just go ahead and line up all of those end keyframes so that the out animation looks the same as the animation in. And then I'll play it back and you can see it'll animate out very similar to how it animates in. And that's it. Now you have your own lower third that you created from scratch. Of course, if you don't want your lower third to look exactly like this or be animated in the same way, you can just use these principles that I've taught you today to create your own style because there are so many different lower third styles out there. If you need some inspiration for designs, I would recommend just going on Envato Market and checking out the styles they have there. So maybe you could copy those and learn how to create those on your own. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and don't forget to comment, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. I hope you have a great rest of your day and until next time guys, peace out.